From your local news leader, this is NBC 10 News Today. 20 million in debt loans risking default. The sales tax undone. The Sterlington go back to square one. And an update this morning on the disappearance of Malia Davis, what officials have now confirmed. Plus, the president makes a declaration. The renewed recovery efforts Rustin now has secured. Good morning. Time now, 6 a.m. Thank you for waking up with us today. I'm Bodie Brooks. And I'm Randy Ayala. Glad to be back. And we have Brian this morning. I'm glad to be here. Glad well, to have having you. Having a good time. Oh, yeah. It's a Tuesday, but, you know, I, I, I'm a little bit more awake than yesterday, but I had some uh, energy drinks to help with that, at least today. So No, you have to have coffee. Coffee only, no energy yeah, drinks. Yeah, coffee. You didn't pay attention to the health minute and the five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, coffee. It's you just, have 25 it's, cups a day. It's too hot for Randy, coffee. Randy, you're one to talk. Aren't you just now starting coffee? Or Absolutely. You got there no, yet? this is all natural. <laughs> this, is, this is lemon water. This uh -huh. is me on lemon water right now. So no I, here we have some interesting national days because yesterday was National Egg Day. What's today? Today we have a National Cheese Day. National Cheese Day? Yeah. Are we going through like all the little all breakfast the food. assortments? All, all, yeah, exactly. <laughs> National Old Maids Day. Old Maid. Did you play that card game when of you were course. in elementary school? <laughs> I just like I just had a blast with the past like right here on the air. Oh man, I need to dig that up and play it. And again. National Cognac Day. Cognac Day. All right. Or I'm going like cheese. An old man I'm gonna, yeah. We're gonna put the cheese on those eggs, because uh, exactly. Go. Ryan's cheese, got the right cheese idea. Cheese on everything. Love cheese. cheese. On, not too much cheese though, because yeah, maybe I don't know. <laughs> Is there ever too much cheese? Is never. Too much? Never enough cheese. Anyway, uh, today it will be hot enough to melt that cheese on those eggs if you decide to make scrambled eggs this morning. And uh, we will be warming up to the middle 90s. Some isolated showers and thunderstorms developing mainly after about noon. But the better rain chances come later this week as we'll get more moisture and a little bit better upper level support. Taking a look outside right now, beautiful sunrise as uh, we get our Tuesday started. And temperatures drop down to about 74. So uh, as I mentioned, we'll talk about those rain chances more coming up a little bit later. Bodie and Randy. Thank you, Brian. Sterlington has surpassed a weekend deadline to begin paying off the town's multi-million dollar deficit. The Board of Aldermen attempted last week to pass a measure that would tax the town out of debt that ultimately became void. That's right. Last night, the aldermen met to look at new options. And NBC 10's Chelsea Jones reports in this morning's top story, the town appears to have a solution, but how to pay for it may still be up in the air. The town of Sterlington is back to the drawing board, fighting to fix the money woes that came with the price tag of $21 million. And that the town is in a very tough situation, a situation we've not ever been in before. And so now I need the support in order to make sure that we can make these things work. Last week, the city voted to pass a 1.5% sales tax increase, making it the highest in the state. But the botched vote didn't actually pass due to a 2017 Louisiana statue. So Monday night, the board met for a special meeting to determine its next steps. Business owners still not on board. So by us increasing our taxes here. He believes we'll send his customers to the competition. So even fresh ideas were born. Bricks that have their names on forever and it stays at the sports complex. But what about the $630,000 that was due June 1st? Mayor Cesar Velasquez says they've met with banks and are working with a forbearance and collection agreement to help. Collection agreement was put in place in order to start pulling in, in some funds into a, a sinking fund type uh, reserve, which is set up so that we can make these payments. Along with some other ideas like sewer rate increases and fundraising at the town ballpark. As for city employees, the mayor says they only have enough money for the next few weeks. We don't want to not pay our employees. And, you know, personally, I can't ask our employees to not get paid. So the money problems persist, but plans are in motion. In Sterlington, Chelsea Jones, NBC 10, your local news leader. Sterlington will have a series of meetings this month to discuss a possible raise in sewer rates and the new sales tax. A Monroe man has been jailed for trying to beat a woman to death with a baseball bat. Police say they found Robert Washington standing over her when they responded to the 100 block of South 11th Street on Sunday. The arrest report says her head was bleeding badly. Her eyes were swollen to the size of golf balls. She was nude from the waist up, and Washington was pulling on the victim's pants. Police say they had to tase Washington into submission before taking him into custody. The woman has been flown to Oshner LSU Health in Shreveport. Washington is charged with attempt second-degree murder and being held on more than half a million dollars bond. 
A Houston area medical examiner has confirmed human remains found in Arkansas last week are those of four-year-old Malia Davis. Malia disappeared almost a month ago. Her stepfather, Darian Vence, was arrested a week later on a charge of tampering with evidence. He had told police that a group of men abducted her, but investigators found signs of decay in his car and blood evidence in his apartment. Community activist Quanell X says Vince told him that Malia's death was an accident and that he had dumped her body in Arkansas. The Harris County Institute of Forensic Sciences says it needs more tests to determine what killed her and how. Washington Parish deputies are asking for help finding a missing teenager. They're looking for 17-year-old Seminaria Prophet. She was last seen at her grandmother's house in Monroe at midnight June 2nd. She's 5'8 and weighs about 140 pounds. She has black hair and brown eyes. No clothing description is available, but she's known to frequent the south side area of Monroe. If you've seen her or know where she is, call the number you see there on your screen. And deputies in Union Parish trying to find a mother of three. Jen Blair was last seen leaving her home in Farmerville on Saturday. She had a black acoustic guitar case and a travel bag with her. She's about five feet, six inches tall and weighs around 140 pounds. She has long, dark blonde hair and blue eyes. Deputies are concerned about her welfare. If you've seen her or know where she is, call 318-368-3124. Raises are coming for Louisiana Public Schools. The State House has approved unanimously $1,000 a year for teachers, $500 for other school workers. Other school spending has to be resolved, though, and the governor has reminded lawmakers of that, writing that they have a chance to invest in education at every level from early childhood all the way through higher education. The extra mile, though, has run out of road. The nonprofit providing mental health services no longer has funding. Throughout its years of service, clients say it's heartbreaking and de devastating to see their organization they love and cherish so much come to an end. Amanda Manning, the executive director, tells NBC10 the importance of understanding and listening to each individual mental need. I'm very concerned about the peers in which we serve. Um, they're, you know, we wanting to make sure that they have somewhere to go somewhere to be that understands them. The Extra Mile has been serving the mentally disabled for more than 25 years. Reston may soon be able to breathe a sigh of relief after a devastating F3 tornado ripped through the city in April. Our partners at the News Star report President Trump has signed a federal disaster declaration that will help Reston, Louisiana Tech, and Morehouse and Union Parishes fund their tornado recovery efforts. The declaration covers damage to public property and infrastructure. Governor John Bell Edwards is hopeful the president will eventually add individual assistance as well. We want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has donated to our Homeless Veterans Food Drive. This is our second year doing it, and with your help, we hope we can top the ten and a half tons we collected last year. That's right. Check out this video here. That's how much we gathered just this past week, filling up our pickups at Max Fresh Market across West Monroe and Monroe. We emptied the donation bins there. They are one of this year's partners. We also have the United Way and the Wellspring on board. Through June 12th, you can drop off any non-perishable food items at any Max Fresh Market in Monroe or West Monroe, the Jackson Street Church of Christ, First United Methodist Church in Monroe, and right here at the NBC10 Studios in West Monroe. Together, we can get our homeless veterans the support they need and deserve. Absolutely. Coming up next, Brian gives us a full look at the morning forecast. And El Dorado's sick of dumping, especially when the trash isn't landing in a landfill. But first, here's Brian with your commute cast. Yeah, as you head out the door this morning, things are looking good, but you might run into some of those pop-up showers and thunderstorms on your way home. So just keep that in mind. It's going to still be a hot and humid one as we go through the course of the day. Coming up a little bit later, we'll talk about those rain chances and when they'll start to work their way back to the Arkansas.